Hi guys, it's Friday afternoon. I've uh, been a town with mum, did a bit of shopping, come back, finished off the uh, blue and silver Claude Butler in yesterday's video. I'm just getting organised, hang on. Oh. I told you I had two sets of lights. I told you the front lights were identical. But uh, which one's which? Which one came off the grey Claude and which one came off the blue one? That's the one off the blue one because it's got the little light sensor on the bottom. If you look at this one, it doesn't have it. But they will fit on each other's brackets. So I just brought that one up to show you. And to show the difference between the rear lights. This is a set I bought last year, by the way. And uh, technically this is rechargeable because, if I can get the cover off, I've got rechargeable batteries in it, but for the previous set, well as you can see, the, the actual light itself is a lot longer and wider, obviously to accommodate the two AAA batteries, and that one is actually quite light quite light. <laughs> this one I am actually going to put on charge because well I'm up here I've got the lead plugged into the computer so I might as well charge it. You're seeing on these the other one's exactly the same you've got that little I'll just shadow that a bit green light that comes on when that goes off it's uh, fully charged. So, I'll take that one back through, then go back down on the other claw. I want to get these on the claw, but I haven't got the right bracket on the blue one. So I've got a better light set up on it. But, uh, that goes on there anyway. <laughs> oh. Get on there, you son of a bitch. There we go. I've also done the brake up too tight on the other cord, so I've got to uh, just readjust that. Uh, I did the inner tube. I'll make sure that isn't punctured. And if it is, fix it at some point, and I'll put that in my green rally, which might be the next one to dig out of the shed and bring up here. But uh, this just needs a bit of a clean, bit of a tidy up. Other than that, the gears are working, everything is working, and I'm just going to... Um, Clean the brake rotors up with some alcohol, which I forgot to put the lid on. It's not good if I knock it over. <laughs> um, just because it'll get all the grime off and that'll help them. Well, it's helped the one on the other clawed work a lot better, so I do have a little hand pump on this one, which was also another Lidl's product. Bottle holder. I've got the better type of lock on this one. Uh, mounted upside down, technically, because that's the only way I could get it on because of the bottle holder. But, uh, and I actually have to, to get up the, the lock off its bracket, I actually have to pull it out to one side like that. Again, that's no biggie. Mud guards as well, because I'm always using a bike in all weathers, so it helps. Helps reduce the amount of spray in your face. Oh yeah, that's the other thing I've got to do is those spokes in the back wheel. You don't have to take the back wheel out to do that, I can just do it as it is. All I want to do, I don't want to do them too tight, because I'll throw the wheel out of whack if I do that. Trying to get the spoke key out. How? You stapled the bloody thing together. Let me go and get the tripod. I wonder how long that'll be before I find my other spoke key now that I've bought that one. Get out of the way. I am really an untidy bastard, aren't I? I've got crap here, there, and everywhere. 
And I've noticed I've got a lovely big black mark on the wall in my hallway and I have no idea how I got it there. But it has pissed me off because it's nice and paint work and there's a big smudge on the wall that I've got to paint over. It looks like a tyre mark but I don't know how I did it look. It's right there. <laughs> and there's another one there. Well, ouch. Go over that later. What I want to do is set you up somewhere there. Tilt you down so the wheel is in shot. Basically all I need to do is on its kickstand. Oh yeah, they're... Uh, oh. See what I mean? That's the sort of noise I'm hearing, especially when I pedal. Because obviously these spokes are loose. When I pedal, it's twisting the wheel hub a little bit and that's making the noise that I can hear. And I've got to remember which way to go to tighten them up now. Um, actually this wheel needs to be cleaned and that's going to be easier with that out of the frame. I can clean the frame easier as well so change of plan. Let's go take the front lamp off. That was also a Lidl's purchase as well, that lamp, a couple of years ago. Yeah, put that up. Oh, and it wasn't the wheel bearing, that was the problem with the other wheel. It was the... Um, There's a reason why I've just dropped gears down at the right. It just makes life easier to get the wheel in and out. Trust me, if I hadn't knocked the gears down, it would not have been that easy. <laughs> right. So, let's, uh, let's bring you this way, shall we? Come with me. Go over here. Oh. Alright, so I'm just going to go around this wheel. Don't know what size I need. Is it a 14? Uh, seems to be a 14. So if I do at least two turns on each spoke, I shouldn't knock the wheel out of whack. So if we go... Ooh. That one's actually not too bad, so I'll leave that one. That one's loose. I can hear a lot of cheering. I wonder if there's a footy match on or something. That one wasn't that loose. I think I'll back that one off again. Well, the others were bloody 14, so why won't that go on? Oh, there we go. Give that a bit of a tighten. It's as simple as this. Oh, that one doesn't want... That one's extremely loose, but that doesn't want to tighten. It has uh, seized up, that one. one.
there's another one. Where I started now. That one needs to be tightened a bit more. This is where I find I completely knacker the wheel, you know, and it's all or just throw the spoke key on the floor. I think that's the one I couldn't tighten up. I think. Is it again? It's this one. Number 14. Something's turning. I don't know what, but something's turning. <laughs> Did that tighten that up? Oh, it has. It's bloody tight, though. Now that should improve this wheel by a long shot. the same with that one. The wheel is still straight. Good. That's a worry. But, uh, Do you think I had a lot of loose spokes on this? Another one. I knew they were loose. I didn't think they were all this bloody loose.
little bit more on that one. Right, so you know, I'm absolutely sweating doing this. So that job done. I did the tile pressures earlier. Uh, what I need is a clean rag to get the brake discs cleaned. But first, we'll get the rims cleaned. I'll find a decent pair of uh, dust caps for the valves as well. It's the problem. I'm sort of regretting buying a white light now. Buying the set in white wasn't a good idea. There we go. Well done. I've actually got three lights on the back of this. I've got these two either side here, and I'll find a button. That one up the top here. The night rider one. go anywhere yet but what I'm gonna do is pause the video because I've got a few other things I need to do like check on the one that's uh, uh, saving probably use the bathroom I may go get something to eat and I will uh, talk to you in a little while right I've got no idea what the time is but uh, it seems like my tummy wants to play up again this is really starting to grate on me now. Got another pony magazine today. <laughs> I actually forgot I had these lights hanging up there. What has got bored so I hung them up there? You know... I'm not even know where to stand Pinkie Pie now. It's actually really strange. These ones that come with the magazines look more like the bloody characters than a lot of the licensed toys do. But anyway, some people are going to be, ew, why is there a man, a 33 year old man collecting this stuff? Nee. Well, the other one, there is another way to look at it. We all know how popular that cartoon is. Not just amongst adults both men and women, you know, old and young adults, but kids as well. So just think, stuff like this is only going to increase in value as the years go on. All that. It's worth next to nothing now, but just think, in years to come, 20, 30, 40, 50 years to come, you know, probably long after the, sh the generation, or the fourth generation of My Little Pony has stopped, there'll be quite a bit of money's worth sitting there. Old collectible toys. <clears throat> Which is why I'm also, in case you're wondering, I've kept this one sealed in its pack. I rarely 
very rarely do this. I am a rebel. I open everything. But, the reason I've kept those keychains in that box is because I've already got three right there. These three are exactly the same. So, I don't know if it's just because on some of these magazines they just put a random free gift in there. Because it did sound this one, one was a, a mystery gift. Um, and I have seen in other parts of the UK where people have bought them that they get slightly different gifts. And it does say on the front cover that gifts may vary. Um, because this also came with it. So I've now got two of these. So again, I know it's only in its cellophane, but I will keep that one sealed. Because again, as they only come with the uh, magazines, there's going to be a limited amount made. So, he says, actually having two of each, but you know what I mean. I need to sort my display out again because they're all falling everywhere. Uh, Sainsbury's has had a uh, move around of their toys as well. I don't know why. Because they're planning to open up that Argos Click and Collect inside the store. Because Sainsbury's own Argos now. They bought them out. Was it last year? It's got to be about a year ago they bought Argos. Um... And I'd heard that they were going to get rid of all the... Because like most supermarkets, they've got the area where they have the clothes, the household wear, the music and toys and things. And I'd heard they were going to do away with all that and just keep it so you'd order it through the Argos section instead of the store. But they were moving all the toys around. But then again, what time of year is it? QDs in town have already got a lot of their Christmas decks out and stuff. Roy's had already cleared away all their garden stuff. Because uh, <laughs> Mum actually said, would you go across to Roy's when we get out to the car to go and get some secateurs, secateurs, however you pronounce the bloody word. And I was like, no. <laughs> she was like, please, I've asked you. And I went, no. <laughs> she was like, why? I went, because they haven't got them. <laughs> They've cleared all the gardening stuff and all the Christmas stuff goes in. Um, she'd have been better off going to the Roy's in Wroxham. Because uh, that's split into one, two, three, four, four, five different sections. They've got a building just for the toys. They've got one just for DIY and gardening tools. That's where she would have needed to have gone. Actually, I actually think they might have a separate section for the gardening. I know they've got one full of clothes and whatnot, and they've got the supermarket. But because they've got all that, they don't need to clear a room to put the Christmas stuff in. But uh, QDs have to do the same thing. All the summer stuff gets taken out and they put all the Christmas stuff in. I'm actually wondering if that's why certain stores like that do it so early. Because obviously it gets to a point where it becomes, you know, it comes to end of season. No one's going to be doing a lot of gardening, just a, probably a bit of general tidying up through the cold months. So not a lot would sell, so they just do away with that. They put the Christmas stuff out, sell that. Have the sales throughout January and whatnot. And by February, March, they've put all the gardening stuff back in. And it's been like that ever since Roy's has had the store in town. Woolworths used to do the same thing. QDs do the same thing. <clears throat> it's a bit annoying because I don't actually like the Christmas decks coming out this early. It's a little bit too early. We haven't got... We're not done with summer. At least the beginning of autumn. Put them out at the beginning of autumn. You know, sort of October time. Beginning of October. That would do me. What were we in now? September. 1st of September today, isn't it? Bloody hell. Right, I've got to find some crap, I mean stuff, to put on eBay. <laughs> uh, 
a whole box of bike lights down here I could stick on eBay because they seem to sell quite well. I've sold a good Did you go knocking that off? I've sold a good chunk of them anyway. Oh it's got some in there, that's why I didn't drink that because that went flat. Oh I've got a little dribble in that as well. <coughs> but I am getting seriously Looking ticked off with my guts. It just seems to be getting worse, and it doesn't matter what I do, what I eat, or what I drink. Nothing, something seems to help, and then all of a sudden my guts act up again. What I've had today, yeah, I know what it was. And I didn't think that would actually affect me. I'm wrong. I bought some, um, you know, you get them pre-made sandwiches in a lot of corner shops and supermarkets and whatnot. I bought some of them and had them for breakfast, didn't I? Well, it was closer to lunchtime, so we'll say lunch. <laughs> Not because I got up so late, it's because I got up and I just needed to wake up before I go out on the bike to go to the store, because I like to be awake. I don't like riding a bike half asleep, that's not very nice. Um... Yeah, I've got a feeling it's probably that. And if I tell Mum, she's going to say the same thing. Because what do they use on their sandwiches? Even though it's like a... Like a, a skim of it, you know? <laughs> Me, I'm a rebel. I love my butter like that thick on my bread. <laughs> well, not quite that thick. But you know what I mean? I do like to spread it thick. But, uh, when you get store-bought sandwiches like that, or pre-made it's like a thimble full but I guess that is enough to affect it because it's going to be um, butter they use isn't it and it's not going to be dairy free that is an arse it's an arse having such a problem it's an arse having such a problem oh, that pun was not actually intended I'd realised what I said afterwards Well, <laughs> shit happens. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just couldn't resist. I'd made one pun unintentionally, I just had to make the other one. I'm just having a bit of a clean up here. There's, ah, here we go. <laughs> Look. Ha! Yeah. It's got milk in bold at the bottom. And I freaking love these. It's bacon with tomato sauce. It's so simple, but it's so tasty. Damn it. <laughs> I can't. I should listen to my body. So uh, I was actually going to say, you know, would anyone have any ideas? Well, I was that close to going. Well, actually, I think I should go to my doctor actually and get the proper diagnosis but uh, I am pretty certain it's dairy based and there might be a few other intolerances there that I haven't picked up on yet definitely wasn't the kebabby that I had earlier oh lovely I go in there and get the same thing every time just Don a meat and a piece and a piece of chips, a portion of chips rather, not a piece of chips. Don't tell me you want some food in your fucking dish again, cat. No, you don't. That's full, so you can piss off. I'm not gonna fill an already filled up dish. Whoops. I need to. Do you know? I've said this before and I'll say it again. I've never ever thought it was possible. That you could piss yourself off and actually get on your own nerves because I do that quite frequently. How? Because I'm such a messy bastard. Look, I've got a freaking bin over there. What do I do? I throw it all down here. Dearing me. 
So I end up making more work for myself like this. When I clear up, I've just found two more plastic balls. Ooh. Empty, yeah, empty, I ain't got tip nothing out of there. And one of these days I'll give my recycle bin a clean out because it needs it. But I always forget, chuck it back down there, then start filling it up again. <sighs> right, well, I've got both bikes serviced and whatnot. Brakes are still a bit weak on the grey one. But uh, not so weak it's dangerous to ride, thankfully. But uh, I did take it for a ride and the wheel is not making any noise now. I've just got an annoying click coming from the crank, which has always been there. But I can't see what's making the click. And it's not affecting the bike, it's just an annoyance. Alright. That's my magazine. Got these in the last issue, but yeah, that's going a bit too far for me. And a friend of mine, Mark Hyder, said they don't stick very well either. But then again, they're only meant for kids, aren't they? So that's just something else that I'll keep in a packet. My little shrine up this corner needs to be bigger. <laughs> I might have to put a shelf between there. Or a couple. Because I don't need to be very tall. Those LEDs aren't very bright, but then again, I don't think that charged very well. I think that was quite shadowed there. But I think I, I will give those to Mum. I go over, I'll find some wet, stick them in her garden. What did I come back this way for? I can't remember. <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, my vintage radio I have broken for bits because we had a little bit of an incident down in the shed. <laughs> so I completely knackered the cabinet anyway. So I thought, take out the speaker and here we go. Something a bit different from modern speakers. Look at this. Five wires to run this speaker. Because you actually need to run power to it. That is probably some sort of filter cap or something on there. So, uh, when you're restoring these old radios, if you need a speaker, you're going to have to use this. Or try and find one like this. This is actually quite heavy. But I'm going to stick this on eBay. It's the old paper cone type. So I've got to be extremely careful with that. But I think that would sell, you know, someone that's restoring an old radio. I don't think there's anything else. This would have needed a hell of a lot of work anyway, because we've got these old... Is that a capacitor? That is a capacitor as well. I'm going to cut some of these capacitors out. You know, just as little keepsakes. Just to say, this is what they were like. These are paper as well. That proved how old this unit was because it's got paper capacitors. I don't think there's anything else I could retrieve off of this. Not that would um, wouldn't require braking to get it off. I don't know if that would be any good to anyone. The switch gear and whatnot. I mean, I could take the switch gear off and a few other bits and the... Oh. Yeah, it broke one of the valves as well, or the tubes, I should say. See, these might be handy. That's your tuner, your tuning capacitor. That, if I could get that off, that might be a salvageable spare. Um... I don't know about these. Or even that transformer. 
I don't really want to sell it as, like that because it's too big, bulky and heavy. And you... <sighs> no. If I can get bits like this off, I'll... Uh... Oops. Tube definitely took a hit because that was right on that corner. But I've taken the other four out and I've got those over there. I don't know if they're any good. Look at this. Before transistors. Well, actually, some devices still use these, even though transistors weren't around. Well, it's got the numbers on it and everything. See, it's all silvered up, but I don't know if that means it's knackered or if it's good. I mean, that used to power up till it blew the guts out of a capacitor. Was it, was it this end? Either this end or that end. It literally just blew and just spurted its guts everywhere. <laughs> Which is why, really, before you even turn one of these on, you really need to replace the capacitors. But at the same time, you need to know if it's worth doing that. So, you'd, you know, you'd want to turn it on to tell if it's worth doing that, if there's any life in it. And to see if anything else is broken, you know, like a... Perhaps a control switch or something. I think that's the radio selector. There's that one, that blue. Right in there. You can see all the gunk that's come out of the end. Look, ugh. That's really sticky. No wonder why. I don't think the electrolyte is meant to be sticky like that. Look at these resistors. Funky. Okay, I want to sit on my chair, but I don't want to sit in front of that fan. I've been messaged as well. I'll deal with that in a bit. Let's see if I can. You just get something stuck to your poor Nima. <laughs> Oh dear. I nearly lost that because I had that sitting right there without realising so it was about to go because I wasn't looking what I was doing. It's like I nearly ran it in the back of a car the other day. Yesterday I think. I was looking at an advert outside Sainsbury's and the car in front stopped. <laughs> See? It can happen to anyone if you're not paying attention. I'll put those valves on as a job lot. Starting a bit of a fiver. I'll get some good photos of them so people can have a look and decide for themselves. And if then someone messages me and say they're not worth it, I'll just, I don't know, keep them as a decorative piece. <laughs> See, that one's all gone. I mean, before that capacitor blew, it, the radio did actually work fine. Has that got a number on it? No, it's got a letter on it. Z, from what I can see. I thought that was actually meant to be painted or something, but you can just see something in the top there. So I'm not actually sure if this one is going to be any good. But I think these other three are. I've been pl still playing that con man game. I'm enjoying that. I see YouTube have uh, changed a few things. The layout, I mean, has um, changed a little bit. Okay. 
hello. All right. Oh, my card is full. Oh, yeah, it's because I've got a video already on this. One minute left, so I'm going to say thanks for watching. I hope you liked this video, and if you did, feel free to hit the like button or the dislike button. I'm not one of these that fusses over that. You can do what you like. Leave whatever comment you like as well. I'm not really first. Anyway, I'll talk to you all later. Bye.